Phyllis Schlaff later against uh, feminist causes and is one of the major critics of the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, she defends the right of a woman to stay at home and be a wife and mother, uh, but she herself is hardly a, a typical housewife. She has written nine books. She has run for Congress three times. She is now a full-time law student. And we thought it might be kind of interesting to find out how things are in the Schlafly household. So with us this morning are not only Phyllis Schlafly, but her husband Fred as well. Uh, the Schlafly's were married nearly 30 years ago in their hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. They still live in the St. Louis area. Uh, Mr. Schlafly is a corporation lawyer. They have raised six children who now range in age from 13 to 24. And good morning. Good morning. Phyllis, nice seeing you again. Mr. Schlafly, morning, nice Nate. having you this morning. First of all, your wife, uh, we have come to know from television and radio and having an occasional conversation here. Uh, she has a very strong, dominant kind of style to the way she works. Is she the same way at home? Does she wear the pants in the family? <laughs> no, she doesn't. I'm obviously uh, physically larger than she is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he yeah. chins himself 25 times every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and she's very uh, submissive. Submissive? Oh, now. Phyllis Schlafly, <laughs> submissive? I have, is that right? Well, uh, um, Fred is the boss of the family, and that's the way uh, it is. And you talk about these other things that I've done, uh, and some of them have had pleasurable aspects to them, but really nothing is as much fun as a happy long-time marriage and the fun of growing children. It really is more fun than all these other things that I do. Then why don't you, well, your, your children are mostly grown. Why don't you spend more time doing that than fighting ERA, then? Well, they don't need the uh, constant supervision. You know, when children get in college and graduate school, they, they don't need mother to check up on them every minute. Yeah. However, a lot of the trips that I take, I take so I can route myself through where they are in different parts of the country right. and have a visit with them. Do you ever disagree, Mr. Schlafly, at home? Oh, we, we might agree disagree on something like uh, who's going to win the pennant, but not on any major issues. Which isn't going to be the Cardinals this year. <laughs> it <No>. certainly isn't. <laughs> you're, you're a loquacious woman, and uh, as I said, a very strong debater and arguer, if you will, for the things you believe in. That's because Fred taught me how to debate. I never did any debating in my life till I got into the Equal Rights Amendment. How did you teach her to do that? Well, that's really how, how we met. I was in scheduled to make the debate and uh, I went down to the First National Bank in St. Louis which published a very fine newsletter and they had published a newsletter on this subject so I went to ask for the author of the newsletter who I thought was a man and it turned out to be Phyllis Schlafly and uh, so that disappoint I, you? <laughs> <laughs> no I was I was thrilled and uh, I invited her to lunch and the romance began. Uh, was it love at first sight? Oh, absolutely. What did you like about her first? Well, I, of course, I thought she was very beautiful, but also she was extremely well-informed, better than I was on many subjects, and uh, it made a very interesting courtship and marriage. What did you like about your husband first? We now know that you're a submissive woman, <laughs> Phyllis, so, but what did you like about, about Fred? When you oh, first I think uh, it was something magic that happened. That's what love at first sight is. He was, uh, I can't say I fell in love because he was, was handsome and smart and successful and well-informed. That really isn't the reason. Uh, love is something magic that happens when two people get together. And, but and it helps when you agree about a number of things. Oh, yes. And I of course do. it does. Oh, yes. I think you have to agree on basic fundamental issues to uh, stick it out over the years. Is he supportive of all or most all of the things that you believe and and campaign for as it were oh sure every way um, intellectually and uh, and morally and financially and every way he's supportive otherwise i couldn't do it and it wouldn't be worth doing because really you you don't think getting on a plane and sleeping in a hotel in in new york to be on a show like this could possibly be as much fun as the excitement of growing children and uh, the fun of the and the, the the emotional security of the family unit and the interesting personalities as children develop that's much more fun it is for you but it may not be for everybody else there are those who would consider flying to new york and so forth and so on to be much more fun than what you're talking about yeah but not about. when you do it all the time 
yeah, uh, on a becomes, regular basis. Oh, no, it becomes just as much a bore as, as any other routine job, if you do it a lot. You're very supportive of your wife. Doesn't that sort of make you a feminist? No, I don't think so. This happens that we agree on the, the issues which she's debating around the country. And uh, if I were polled on them, I would, I would be voting the same way she's speaking. I think what <clears throat> feminism does is to, is to teach women to put their, well, in the first place, it's a negative outlook on life. It teaches women that they've been oppressed and discriminated against and the cards are stacked against them. And secondly, it teaches them that they should put their own self-fulfillment over every other value. Now, it's a free country for those who choose that. But I think that marriage and motherhood require a lot of social compromises because you have two people who uh, were brought up in different homes and may have different ideas. And to get along in the family unit, you have to make certain compromises. Now, I think it's worth the price because I think the rewards are so great. But I do believe that feminism uh, teaches women to say um, their own self-fulfillment under their own name for their own purposes mm -hmm. is the greatest value. Can you see your husband is very supportive of all your efforts, both at home and in, in public life. Every marriage is not like that. Every husband is not quite so in tune, perhaps, with his wife, her goals, her desires, her needs, and her potential fulfillments. Can you see the marriages and understand them where this is not the case, where you have the support of husband, where other women do not, and that there might be a need for something like ERA, if not an equal rights amendment. Well, ERA is not going to make husbands uh, refrain from being jealous or not be petty or small about mm. things. ERA isn't going to do any of those things. Uh, you, uh, you have to work with the situation you have, and people have different kinds of problems. But ERA doesn't solve any of those. Mm. Would you have married Phyllis if she were going to stay at home 100% or 98% of the time and be a, quote, housewife? And I put that in quotes. Mm. Yes, I would. I was that's what very he thought much he was in love with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's what he thought he was getting. And uh, we have six children, and I, I feel there's a lot for her to do at home. Well, of course, that's what I was, as they were all children, yeah. uh, babies. Um, I didn't use nursery schools or kindergarten or even the first grade. I mm -hmm. taught them all to read at home and kept them home and loved having the small babies around. Phyllis got them a year's head start that way. They entered the second year of grade school at six and able to read and write. Yeah, so they all done well. Quite a gang at home. Yeah. Finally. You don't seem to have a clash of wills. There's not a lot of competitiveness in your home. No one feels threatened. Politically, can you understand those marriages where that is not the case? Well, yes. I, you see, I'm not competing with Fred in his career. He's got yeah. a wonderful, successful legal career. And I don't compete with him in that. And uh, I have my little projects over here, which he supports, and that may have something and to do with it. it doesn't infringe on your life at home. Do you uh, ever see each other? Do you ever see each other? Uh, <laughs> oh, of oh, course. Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. We've got six children. Well, we have to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you all for being with us this morning. By the way, tomorrow morning, Bella and Martin Abzug are going to be on with us, and we're going to discuss a lot of these same subjects with them. Mm -hmm. You've heard of her. I've heard of her, yes. Yes. Thank you. Phyllis has so far been able to defeat some of Bella's projects. <laughs> so I understand. We will talk with the Abzugs tomorrow morning at the same time. And Mr. and Mrs. Schlafly, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. We'll be back in just a minute.